What's up guys, welcome back to the Green Hall Garage. Today we just got a nice package in from Fuel Tech to install this FT550 ECU on my 2008 Sea-Doo RX PX. Now, this harness was designed for the FT450, which is a fantastic ECU, just about the same as the FT550, but you don't have as many inputs and outputs. It's fantastic for this application, you are maxed out. So I opted for the FT550 and we will be installing a B harness to add more inputs to this. Now the cost for the FT450 package right now is roughly 1700 bucks. Now that does not include the AFR module to log AFR with the fuel tech, but I highly recommend adding that to your system because the O2 closed loop capability is so nice. It makes tuning the fuel very easy. But other than that, we're gonna get this stuff opened up and installed. So this would be the O2 sensor for the wide band O2. You do need an ignition module to power the OEM coils. I opted for the OEM style Bosch ignition module, but if you like, you can upgrade that to the Fuel Tech one. This is really all you need. This would be the wide band O2 harness. This is going to allow us to monitor AFR and log it through the FT550 with closed loop fueling capabilities, which is fantastic. And this one here will be the main part. This harness is literally plug and play. It plugs right into the OEM connectors and you're ready to go once you upload the tune. Now, for those of you that are really unfamiliar with the fuel tech system, it's actually really nice. It's not only do you have excellent control over fueling and ignition timing, but the amount that you're able to data log, the data logging of this alone is worth the cost. Nothing compares to fuel tech data logging and aside from all the engine parameters that you can log and monitor through this, the acceleration data that you're able to gather allows you to really fine tune your setup. You can test different pump combinations, different stuff on the hull, see what accelerates faster than others. This makes it an excellent tuning tool, far better than the OEM Siemens ECU on this. So we're gonna get this stuff installed and get rid of the outdated technology found on these old Siemens ECU skis. So the first thing, we gotta remove all this old stuff. Now, I have not made a video with this ski yet, but this is far from a stock 08 RXPX. So already I've got a lot of performance parts on this, mainly being the ET68140 supercharger. This is unfortunately discontinued, but there still are some options for boost for these older superchargers. I've got a Kalos performance cam, Fizzle F1000 intercooler, a custom open loop cooling kit. There's a few other things in here. Once we get to tuning it, it's gonna be pretty damn sweet. We got the seat base removed to get installing this, and I gotta say, it's probably one of my favorite things about this ski is you've got so much access to this. And right here is the OEM ECU. So the fuel tech harness will literally plug right into this. So we're gonna route that up to the front after we take this ECU off, because we will no longer be needing this. And that'll clean up the look of the Intec manifold a bit too. So I've got the old Siemens ECU off, I got the base plates off, and that alone, it really cleaned up the look of the intake manifold. Is it a pretty manifold? Not really, but it looks better than what it did. And I've routed the OEM connectors up to the front. So now, we can come up here, secure them in place, and connect the new harness. So I got the harness plugged in. I actually just zip tied this relay and the igniter up here. I'll find a nice place to mount this later. I'll probably try to mount it in here somewhere so it's not zip tied, but this is gonna keep it from bouncing around for the time being. All that's left is to plug this into the ECU and wire in the wideband O2 Nano. Now, the only con to this harness is it's not very long, so I'm not able to run it up through here. So what I ended up doing was just drilling a hole in this. That way, when I shut the hood, I can plug this into the ECU, no problem. Right now on my 3D printer is a dash bezel that I've made, and we're gonna install that tomorrow when it's done. So it's really gonna make it look nice and pretty here. All we got left to do is put in the, the wideband O2 Nano and the O2 sensor, and we'll be ready to go. What I've already done is wire in a plug for this harness for the Nano. So it'll just plug right in. So this connector here will plug into the harness 
on this 12-way connector. Just like that. Put this in. We'll go up into here. And we can run this back to the O2 sensor. So, let's get that done. I already had an O2 sensor set up on this. It was an AEM gauge. And we're just going to replace that O2 sensor and harness for that. So up here, this is where I had my AEM gauge. I 3D printed this bezel. I'm just going to remove this and make another bezel for the wideband O2. So I'll have AFR here and up on the dash. Should be a pretty sweet setup when it's all done. out there. I have that tomorrow to install. Install this so we can connect to the laptop. Now we're ready to fire this thing up. Didn't take all that much work to do it. Now we can write the ECU. Now this fuel map is probably way off because of how modified the engine is. Probably not going to stop right away and it's probably not going to run very well. First start, obviously got a lot of fine tuning to do. Idling very high, we got a lot of fine tuning to do to this, but so far we're good to go. We're gonna tune it at the water because you don't wanna run it on the trailer here. We're going to come back in the morning and have this nice and pretty and installed. Have this, hopefully, I might be able to 3D print this tonight to install this here. And then we're also going to install a CanDo GPS module so we have true GPS speed on the dash. And that's going to help a lot with our acceleration data and logging. So we'll come back in the morning, get this thing wrapped up, and hopefully we'll have decent enough weather to take it to the water and start tuning it. So we're back here today in the dash insert finished printing last night. I had already cut this out to make room for the new FuelTech ECU. I've already got it mounted here in this dash, so really just got to plug it in. Like that. And this will bolt into here. I made this to where it'll screw into the factory holes for that dash. This is my first one, so it's a little rough. I can make some improvements, but overall, I think that's pretty good. So after we got this mounted, the last thing left was to put the CanDo Pro GPS module. I just stuck this up here. I figured this would probably be the best place for it to get the best satellite signal. It's right on top of the ski. Wiring this was actually pretty simple. You got a positive, a negative, and a signal wire. So you hook it up to positive and ground, and I connected the signal wire to an input on the B harness. Right now, I just have the B harness for this coiled up in this glove box area because I haven't fully decided how many sensors I'm gonna add. And once I do that and get everything installed, I'm going to break off the B harness, make everything nice and pretty. Now to read this GPS module, you have to calibrate it as a, a wheel speed sensor in the tune. If any of you want to add this to your fuel tech system on your jet ski, email me. I hope you get it set up. But other than that, this thing's ready to go to the water. I am going to put the wideband O2 Nano here this week. I just need to 3D print the bezel and swap it over because this AEM gauge is no longer functional. And I think one of the coolest things about this ECU is the startup screen. You could have whatever you want. Straight from FuelTech, it's got a FuelTech logo, but I actually put the original FuelTech Performance logo, which is our website, which has the matching ski for this. And for those of you that don't know, many years ago when FuelTech Performance and Green Hulk first started, it was with the 2004 Sea-Doo RXP. I don't think our garage is complete without one of these original RXPs in here. Now you can see I've got 
the mile per hour in the middle, it will read 50 until it reaches a, a satellite signal and it'll go down to zero. This 50 lets you know that the can do is calibrated because you do have to calibrate that with the magnet. We've got our AFR here, of course this is not right at the moment. Our manifold pressure, fuel level, ignition timing, the O2 correction for the closed loop, coolant temp, and as we add more sensors, we could customize this. This has four different screens. I'll go over more of this and the tuning stuff once we get it on the water. We take it out today, but it is raining and 60 degrees outside. But we're supposed to have good weather this weekend, so hopefully we'll get out there this weekend, tune this thing. That ought to be a pretty good video. I appreciate all you guys for watching. Links to all this will be in the description below, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.